When investing in dividend stocks, you want to choose a company with a competitive advantage. I call it the edge, Warren Buffett calls it a moat. What we're trying to do is we're trying to find a business with a wide and long-lasting moat around it, protecting a terrific economic castle for one reason or another. It can be, it can be because it's the low-cost producer in some area, it can be because it um, it has a natural franchise, because of service capabilities, it could, it could be because of its position in the consumer's mind. Pause. He's talking about brands. Brands can be a part of, or perhaps the entirety of, a company's moat. That's why today I want to cover a recent report from Brand Finance, a UK-based consultancy that ranks the strength and value of Canadian brands, which I think can give dividend investors some food for thought. So grab a seat on the patio, pour yourself a bowl of honey bunches of moats, and let's talk about the big picture. Hey folks, welcome to Dividend Gardening. Canadian brands are doing much better than they were last year overall. On average, their value increased by 22%, a big improvement over last year's 1% drop. Let's take a look at the side-by-side -side comparison with 2021 on the left and 2022 on the right. Banking still makes up nearly a third of the entire brand value of the top 100, despite there only being eight banks listed. In fact, when you add that 10.6% in insurance and the 3.4% from asset and wealth management, you can see that the financial sector has the largest brand value by far. It's more than 40% of the list. No other sector is even close. We have telecom and retail brands continuing to hold a high percentage of the overall brand value landscape, and we see some gains in the energy sector, which is oil and gas, gaining more than a full percentage point, and in the tech sector, which now takes the final spot among the top sectors. Charles Scarlett Smith, director of Brand Finance Canada, thinks there's still room to shake things up among what Brand Finance calls the strong traditional legacy brands near the top of the list, and predicts Shopify and Constellation Software could make a run for the top 10 in the years to come. On the brand value list, Constellation Software is currently at number 19, just ahead of CN Rail, while Shopify is at number 50, but it's making big gains, jumping 10 rankings over last year and increasing in value by 68%. Let's move on to Canada's most valuable brands. Brand finance determines this by factoring the value of the entire business, which might be a parent company in some cases, the value of the branded business itself, the value the brand would have over the same business running under a generic brand, and the value of the trademark and intellectual property. At the top spot is RBC, which increased its brand value by 13% over the previous year to regain the number one position from TD. In fact, banks occupy four of the top five spots and five of the top seven spots. Although the banks still hold the top three spots as they did in 2020, the brand finance report is hinting that maybe that will change if banks don't defend their moat against what it calls disruptor brands. Here it notes that Canadians, especially younger Canadians, aren't quite as brand loyal as they used to be when it comes to opening up a banking or investment account. They're more inclined to choose the best brand for the specific service they need. Instead of doing all their banking and investing with one of the big five, they might use Tangerine or Simply, or even Coho or PC Financial to do their daily banking, they might have a high interest savings account over at EQ Bank, and they might buy a few dividend stocks through Wealthsimple Trade. If these brands are providing the services people need in a more convenient and cheaper way, they're going to win over more business. And that comes at the expense of the big banks. Now, most of these disruptor brands still have links to big names in Canadian finance. Tangerine is owned by Scotiabank, Simply is owned by CIBC, and EQ Bank is an emerging bank in its own right. But I think the question remains, is this current system sustainable? Will there come a point where all the major banks will have a disruptor brand of their own? Or will some of the major banks take cues from disruptor brands to stay in the game? We can see here that the top 10 overall hasn't changed. They've switched positions around, but it's still the same top 10 as it was last year. Manulife is holding steady at number 11, but they haven't been able to break through to the top 10 yet. Almost all the values are trending up, Brookfields is the only one that dropped a bit, but one thing all 10 of these companies have in common is that they're all dividend paying companies. There are a couple of other notable stories here in the top 10. For one, Canada Life is the first insurance company to make the top 5 in brand value. At the beginning of 2019, they were operating primarily under three brands, Great West Life, London Life, and Canada Life. After those three companies combined with regulatory approval, they officially consolidated under the Canada Life brand in 2020, and you can see the effects of that in this chart from Brand Finance. 
clearly it made good sense for them to combine their efforts under a single brand. Alimentation Couchetard did something similar as well a few years earlier, combining nearly all of the brands they operated under the Circle K brand, with the exception of the Couchetard brand in Quebec, although they did change the brand colors to match Circle K's red and orange. Let's move on to TELUS, which, for the first time, has surpassed Bell in the rankings. TELUS is growing their business, and I think there's a key element of their strategy that's feeding that growth that their competitors aren't focused on. Think about what Bell and Rogers have in common that TELUS does not. Here's a hint, I have yet to turn on the radio and hear... A TELUS radio station. Bell Media and Rogers Sports & Media hold many of the biggest brands in Canadian media, and it makes sense, they're communications companies, so why not both have the production and distribution sides for a variety of content? But TELUS is nowhere to be found here. They don't have any radio stations, no TV stations, they don't have an ownership stake in a sports team. Instead, TELUS has opted to focus on something else entirely. Instead of media, they've been focusing on tech. Their health division provides virtual healthcare services, and those only became even more crucial when the pandemic began. And its agriculture division helps provide data insights to help farmers make decisions that optimize their operations and make food production and distribution more efficient. These are businesses that, in my opinion, can scale at a much greater rate, and I also think it builds this perception of being very future-focused. I mean, they say that in their advertising, but I think the focus on tech really does reinforce that. If you're enjoying this video so far, please plant a like on this video. It helps the channel to grow and lets me know you'd like to see more of this kind of analysis. Thank you so much, and now we'll move on to Canada's strongest brands. Brand finance determines this value through a combination of how much the business invests in its marketing, how positively the brand is perceived among its stakeholders, weighted the most heavily toward its customers, and how the business is doing financially and on the markets if it's a publicly traded company. This might be a little less obvious than in the previous top 10 list, but once again, all of these brands are, or are connected to, dividend-paying stocks. Crown Royal, a Canadian brand of whiskey that previously held the top spot for the past three years, is now owned by Diageo, a British company. But whether you hold it on the London Stock Exchange or as an ADR on the New York Stock Exchange, it's a dividend stock. We also have Winners, the Canadian analog to TJ Maxx. They both have the same parent company, which is the TJX Companies, and TJX trades on the New York Stock Exchange, in fact it's in the S&P 500, and it's also a dividend stock. In the top spot on this list we have Scotiabank. Brand finance attributes much of its strength to higher recommendation rates over its competitors. We already discussed the rise of disruptor brands, so again, for the big banks, customer satisfaction and retention is more important than ever, and it looks like Scotiabank is doing a good job here. In second place we have A&W. It's the second largest burger restaurant in Canada after McDonald's with more than 1,025 locations. A&W's current strategy is to become number one with millennial burger lovers, chosen and trusted for truly good food and the convenience they crave. And that's where their marketing focus has been. They mention how they're continually repositioning and differentiating A&W in the QSR, that's quick service restaurant, industry through the use of better ingredients. Some of this marketing has received criticism over the years, but it did work, and a and seems to have really stuck with it for the long term. Just recently they announced a trial redesign of their takeout cups that has no lid, no straw, is recyclable and compostable, and somehow doesn't leak. And lastly, I want to talk about Canadian Tire, which ranked in fourth place. The interesting thing about Canadian Tire is not only is it focused on strengthening its own brand, but it's also using that leverage to build its own portfolio of brands. These are all Canadian Tire-owned brands. Look at Frank for a moment. When it began to incorporate some humor into what was originally a generic brand, people took notice. You're right, Paper Tells, Frank is on a roll. That's just one example, but it illustrates that instead of marketing their products generically, Canadian Tire is working to propel its own brands, which just so happen to be exclusively sold at Canadian Tire or one of its subsidiaries. Beyond that, Canadian Tire tends to have a great reputation among its customers. In August 2021, it was named Canada's most respected general merchandise retailer, even outperforming Costco. Now I'll pass the question off to you. What brand do you think will hold the number one spot next year? 
let me know in the comments below. As always, my analysis in this video is not meant to be an endorsement of any of these stocks, I am not a financial advisor, and this video is for informational and entertainment purposes only. It might be outdated or inaccurate, so always do your own due diligence or seek the advice of a licensed financial professional. Thank you so much for watching, happy dividend gardening, and we'll see you in the next video.